you wanted the best, you've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the world. In the world. The Chris Voss Show, the preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. Get ready, get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. It's Voss here from thechrisvossshow.com. The Chris Voss Show. Dot com. Hey, we're coming here with another great podcast. Oh, my God, it's another one. 700 podcasts on the Chris Foss Show. Go back and listen to all those shows. We've had such a plethora of uh, amazing authors, guests, CEOs, people that have been on the show. We're bringing you another brilliant author today who's going to blow your mind with his amazing book. Uh, and to see that, you can, uh, of course, subscribe to the podcast. Tell your friends, neighbors, relatives, too. Go to YouTube.com forward slash Chris Foss. Hit the bell notification. Go to Goodreads.com forward slash Chris Foss. Go to Facebook.com forward slash The Chris Foss Show. You go to Facebook.com, or I'm sorry, LinkedIn.com, and you can see all the groups. There's like three or four groups over there as well as Facebook as well. Uh, so this is really cool. We've got an exciting new author uh, that we're going to be talking to. He's not a new author. He's actually done a lot of different work that we'll get into here in the bio, but he's got the newest book he's got out. Let's put it that way. And this episode is brought to you by IFI Audio and their new Neo IDSD. The Neo is the new wave of digital sound listening for your desktop, music, gaming, and bleeding edge Bluetooth, even MQA audio file decoding. Uh, we're using it in the studio right now. I've loved my experience with it so far. It just makes everything sound so much more richer and better and takes things to the next level. IFI Audio is an award winning audio tech company with one aim in mind to improve your music enjoyment of quality sound, eradicate noise distortion and hiss from your listening experience check out their new incredible lineup of dax and audio enhancement devices at ifi-audio.com uh, his name is tyler davis and he is the author of new america awakenings and he is a professional author based out of salem oregon tyler lives with his husband dog and dog cat He'll explain that to us later. Tyler has been writing since he was in the sixth grade and has several short scripts produced and an internet television series. Tyler is also a freelance political opinion writer and blogger. Some other things about Tyler is he has a five-star rating on this book from the San Francisco Book Review, Reader's Favorite, Reads the Discovery NN light book heaven it was named a 2020 best book by nn light heaven uh he's a four star portland book preview or i'm sorry portland book review and net galley on this book and he's accomplished short film scripts produced tears for the sun no red ribbons uh, he has an internet television show called villains you can look up and his novel new america awakenings and he has numerous political blog and pieces he is also I hope I pronounced this right, a nephrology nurse. Welcome to the show. How are you, Tyler? Hey there. And you did it good. Well done. Well Thank done, you. nephrology Thank nurse. You. Now, I think you owe it to my audience to explain, what is a dog cat? Um, it is a cat that has been raised by dogs. Um, he was a rescue kitten barn cat, and a group of Shelties took him in and raised him. So he acts a lot like a dog mm -hmm. and not so much like a cat. So, yeah, he's a you know, dog cat. I love dogs, and I, I'm i not that excited by cats. Like, if I, I always tell the joke, if I wanted something that loves me half the time and hates me half the time, I would just get married. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> half might be a little too much of the love part. It might be like 90% hate. No, never mind. I'm just doing Well, you know, whatever the algebra works out for you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it'd probably be 100% uh, hate uh, for, you know, I'm just not. I'm, I'm working on me. Let's put it that way. Tyler, give us your <laughs> plug so people can find you on the interwebs, my friend. Um, you can find me at uh, tylerdavisbooks.com, the Tyler Davis, uh, dot medium com for, uh, for my blog posts. Um, you can find me on facebook.com backslash the Tyler Davis books. Um, I have a YouTube channel. Uh, you can find that from um the the facebook page as well um 
And then, of course, all of the various places that you can buy my book, uh, Amazon Best uh, or Best Best Buy, uh, <laughs> Amazon Barnes and Noble, uh, iBooks, uh, Kobo, uh, pretty much wherever books are sold. If they're not, if it's not physically there, they can order it for you. There you go. There you go. And you have written a book that is certainly most topical, even down to this day today. So this is pretty yeah, amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I, let's start with the reason why you wrote this book. And uh, I got to tell you, folks, stay tuned because this is going to be an amazing story that parallels our, our history and our time that we're living in now. Well, first off, I need to I need to make this very clear. I started writing this book in 2015 before Trump was was uh, even nominated to be the party uh, standard bearer. Um, but I. I am a huge fan, huge fan of dystopian novels and, and movies and because they deal a lot with politics. And I asked myself, what if what if our country was taken over by a uh, Christo fascist uh, authoritarian regime? Um, and what if it was led by a businessman and not a typical politician? Um and I wrote most of the book uh, between 2015 and 2016, and I had a life, I had a life event, and I had to take a, a couple of years off from writing. And then um, I finished the book in Feb, eh, January, and then started the pro- the, the process of, of publishing. Um, so, yeah, this book is it just it, it is what it is. <laughs> Uh, the whole premise, the, it's just the whole premise of, of what would happen to our country if there was a contested election and it broke out into civil war. There you go. So give us that overview of the book. Uh, is uh, Maybe a little, with a little bit more detail of what the book is about and, and the, <laughs> okay. the parallels of it. So um, the book takes place after the civil war and there was a, sm- a foreign invasion and uh, then the president takes over the country and people are split into projects based on race and religion um, because the government felt that uh, by being kept with your own people, it would be more peaceful. <laughs> um, you know, um, again, wrote this before, before last year. Um, and it, 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 it's also a coming of age story of uh young man named Colt. He's 16 years old. He's been, he's grown up in uh, a white Christian project um, that is under attack by Muslims. Um, Mm -hmm. Or at least, you know, that's because they're, they're, they're very isolated. The government controls all of the media, all of the information. Mm -hmm. And it's really about him growing up in this project uh, before he finds out really what the government is up to, um, and it starts a larger journey. Mm. Um, it's uh, it, it's definitely not all in one book. <laughs> there you go. Is is uh, now when you say not all in one book, is there a continuing series to this book that you plan? There are three books um, in in this series. Um, so the first book is basically uh colt uh trying to decide what kind of man he wants to be living in this world um and then finding out the government isn't who they say they are um and then i don't want to ruin it for anybody so i don't yeah, want to yeah, say you know, well, at the all. end <laughs> of the first book this is what happens buy the book to find uh, out what the hell happens yeah uh but there's uh, his family is very much under the eye of the government and mm. the local uh, authority. And her name is Catherine. Um, and it, the lots of, lots of cheery stuff in it, like, you know, guillotines and, and people. Oh, sets, my know. favorite. Oh, you know, it, it's, it's a holiday favorite. Right. Um, and you know, disagreeing with the government comes at a cost wow. of your life. Does it seem a little? Uh, I don't want to say it's it's exactly like that, but is it is it a bit like nineteen eighty four ish, where you know you're fighting an oppressive government, and you're trying to find the truth? Um, kind of. Um, it's it, 
you know, if I, if I was forced to, you know, it's kind of a, a mix of, of 1984 and maybe like Maze Runner Hunger Games mm. um, where, you know, there's a larger, there's a larger uh, adventure for the young adult. Nice. Um, but it's, it definitely has the 1984 um, feeling uh, the Portland uh, book review um, when they reviewed it uh, said it's uh, one of the possible Americas uh, that five years ago would have been seen as a dystopic science fiction and impossible to actually happen. Nowadays, we're not so sure. New America Awakenings makes 1984 look rather tame. It almost became a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I had, I had a, uh, some of my pre-readers uh they were messaging me like did were they like looking over your shoulder cuz there's some <laughs> there are some things in this book that are just like uh, just really spot on and um even a health there's a health component in it um and i'm like you know i really should have gotten a non-disclosure out of you know and a paycheck you know damn it you're you're going from novelist to historian. The uh, you know it's funny we've had so many authors on this year, uh, great authors like yourself, and they submitted most of their manuscripts to their publishers like back in September of like 2019. And as we interviewed them, as their books were published, and you know almost a year later or nine months later, it was amazing. They were just like, "Wow, I knew I was kind of right, and I warned people about shit that can happen, but I didn't think it'd come true." Uh, so there's that. Well, you know, the anybody who is who likes politics, and I've I've loved politics my whole life. Um, I I was a second grader campaigning for Jimmy Carter, so I, I guess I've always been you know for the underdog. Um, anybody who's paid attention to the last twenty five years could see that this wasn't a really big stretch. Um, and when I wrote the book, I wanted to write a book that was dystopian, that didn't rely on laser beams or hovercraft or having to look like Tina Turner in Thunderdome, you know. Um, That's next year. Yeah, well, you know, just maybe, maybe. Just um, <laughs> it almost was yeah. last year. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, you know, what what's going to make more, what's, what's more scary? Something that looks like science fiction or something that could really happen and eek. That Tina Turner though in uh, in Thunderdome was pretty hot. I mean, you gotta you gotta give that up. So, <laughs> oh, iconic, absolutely iconic. You know, and I think if Tina Turner would have shown up in in, in DC dress like that, uh, we would probably had a different outcome. I would have paid to see that. Uh, so, uh, you mentioned that this uh, story was set after the Civil War. Is it said what what time area is it technically kind of set in? Well, it's it's a it's a future. Okay. Uh, so it's not it's not uh, you know our past civil war. This is a new civil war. This is a okay. civil war. Oh, okay. Part due. Okay. So it's kind of uh, more in modern times. When I was thinking, when yes. you mentioned the civil war, I wasn't sure if it was like after the original. I get no, these civil wars no. confused now because there's you know there's clearly been so many. They're, they're, <laughs> after the, you know they're, they're just happening with a great after, regularity. After January sixth. Um, you know it's it's uh, it's like, like how many times new, can get we get a defeat, new idea? How can we, how many times can we defeat the Confederacy for the love of God? <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, um yeah. so you um when you uh you started this a long time ago, which is really insightful, and uh uh there's several different elements to it. Uh we of course don't want to give away the whole story, but what was one of the reasons you used the guillotine in, in this in the storyline? Um when I <laughs> When I was a kid, um, I, I, I went to a Baptist church, and um, they there was a, a movie called A Thief in the Night, hmm. and it was a Christian-based film of the end times, and hmm. um, you either took the mark or you died, and the way you oh. died was by guillotine, and that scared the crap out of me as a kid. <laughs> Um, and carry it over into me. And I'm like, what's, what's one of the scariest things that you can, you can threaten someone with being shot? No lethal injection. No guillotine. There we go. There you go. Uh, so yeah, that comes from my, um, that comes from nightmares of my childhood. Wow, man. The scars are cheap. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, what's really crazy, Chris last summer guillotine started showing up. Uh, they started geez, showing up yeah. at events and yeah. you know and i was and i was like trademark um trademark, yeah. you know it, but they started 
you know, they, they were, they were completely gone. And then last year um, they started showing up at, at protests. Wow. Wow. And now you mentioned, uh, you mentioned that they separate uh, people in different projects based upon race and religion. Is mm-hmm. there two main groups or is there multiple groups? Uh, Cause you know, there's multiple religions and, and multiple races of people. Um, one of the joys of writing fiction is that you don't have to account for reality. Oh. Um, in the first book, there's we really only talk about two: uh, the 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 Muslim and the Christian projects uh, that are the two that are fighting with one another. But it we do know that um, there are others um, mm. out there. Um, they use boots as a way of differentiating groups. So the Christians, um, the white Christians got gold um, trim on their boots. Muslims got purple. Uh, The black population gets uh, blue. Um, So on and on. And and, uh, the LGBT community got pink. And well, at least the they got pink. For, I mean, come on, man. They need well, pink, that's right? actually historic. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, when you look back at at the Holocaust. Yeah. Um, so, and the reason was because in war, you you know, people get shot in the head or whatever. But you know, if their body got blown up, you could at least tell by their boots who was who. Um, oh, but I did it, not know that. That's amazing. Well, well, in my book, that's the way it goes. Oh, oh. <laughs> is this in true history or in your history book? Because. That's that's pretty amazing, and that they have to wear boots. This is why it wouldn't work for me. I have to have flip flops. So, um, you would be going to the guillotine for <laughs> I would be a, the, a cer- I for a ceremony of peace. That. Just just as a fashion <laughs> punishment, a fashion uh, penalty. You know, Ralph please tell me you don't wear black socks with your flip flops. Um. You know, Chris, we'll talk you? after the show. We'll talk after the show. <laughs> Let's put it this way. There are people on social media that have seen pictures of me wearing socks with my flip-flops or just wearing flip-flops that do want me to go to the guillotine. So that is real. <laughs> Not, you know, it's, it's, it's a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it may be you if you ever see those pictures. I, 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 I promise it wasn't me. <laughs> I, I'll talk with you first, and then we'll take you, out. Well, then we'll take you on a little trip. <laughs> after the show, he's going to be, look, either lose the flip-flops or it's – <laughs> um so tell us about some of the villains in the book there's a couple different villains in there uh, give us some lowdown yep. on those um so the, the 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 big villain is the president in the government um but in the project uh new of new bethlehem and that's that's where uh colt grows up is is new bethlehem um is Catherine, and Catherine is um the keeper of law and she just pretty much reigns the entire project through terror. Uh, it sounds like my ex-wife, uh, you know, it really could apply to so many different exes. Um, she, there, there's something called the red phone and you can anonymously call in on your neighbors to report them. Um, except for, the anonymous kind of goes out the door because it's all covered in glass. Um, but in the book, they said they put a, a red phone booth out in front of her house because they thought she probably used it so much. They wanted to make it convenient for her. Wow. Um, she, she's, she, I, I have to be honest. Uh, she was one of my, one of my most fun characters to write. <laughs> you are, a, you are a sadist then. <laughs> well, no, it's, it's, um, I, I wanted to write uh, a villain that was complex because it's so easy to make a one dimensional villain who's just out for, you know, uh, blood or money or both. Um, she's very complex and that she has to have um, she has to have conditions for her in order for her to act. And she's completely a narcissist Um very unaware of herself but she holds all the power and you know um even when she has a, a moment of showing her humanity it just her humanity is just that shallow but uh she was she was a lot of fun to write <laughs> uh so um uh i we could never give too much of these things away is there is there a good female character 
Oh, absolutely. Um, so the, the, the book is um, kind of a contrast. You know, there's um, even though the country is taken over by Chris, you know, a Christo fascist regime where it's now one, you know, basically uh, they all have to follow the same religion in, in, in the Christian projects and um, it's used in a negative way. There is still feeling amongst individuals of, of what good Christianity is. Mm-hmm. Um, so there is, you know, Colt's mother is, is a very strong, very strong woman who is, uh, she's really actually pretty inspirational. Um, and then, and then Colt has um, Jenny and Jenny is not the traditional female heroine at all. Um, in in the in the book, for girls, dolls are a form of socioeconomic hierarchy. The better your doll, the better your standing in society. And Jenny completely says, "Screw that," and decides that instead of a doll, she brings a bat. Ah. Uh-huh. My kind of woman right there on Tinder. You know, she she wasn't going to be a victim. Um, she didn't care what people thought about her, even in a society where, con, you know, being uh, conformity can mean the difference between life and death. She decided, you know, I'm going to do my own thing. Um, and so she definitely does not fit. Um, she doesn't fit in. She doesn't fit the stereotypes, but she has her values and she doesn't let up on those values and she doesn't have to, um, you know, she doesn't have to be upfront to affect change. And um, yeah, so there, there's, there's definitely a balance. She's like that old bogey movie. We don't need no stinking dolls, man. We don't need no <laughs> dolls. Wasn't that, that was the line? Wasn't it? I don't know. It's a long time. I, I, I don't know. I'm still stuck on with <laughs> black socks and flip flops. I mean, it's just sorry, tragic. Dude, I'm just I've scarred you again. <laughs> you like the guillotine, you'll have nightmares for life. Um, which is probably, I mean, that's just if I'm a fashionista in that way. Um, the uh, uh, one of the things about this book that was kind of interesting is you make it uh, okay for the characters that are boys to cry and have emotions. Uh, other than just anger and strength. Um, and so using emotions in this way kind of made it a little different. Uh, what were some of the reasons behind that and the reasons you use that with your characters? Um, I believe that, you know, we all are subjected to emotions and that this whole concept that, you know, boys don't cry is 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 a myth and harmful. But more so in this world that they live in this authoritarian world um emotions become an important uh an important characteristic to hold on to when you have to be like everybody else and you have to conform and you're not allowed to have your opinions you can at least still own your emotions um and so for Colt, um it was really important for me to try to hold on to his humanity as a, as a hero, as you know, as the hero of, of a story. Um, and I've had a lot of readers who have actually reached out to me about that and, and have thanked me for, you know, allowing um, that emotion to be there because it, it really helps to balance out that oppressive, government you know that oppressive feeling um and i think that this is true of humanity we we hold on to our emotions Mm -hmm. it's a very good lesson i cried this morning at the inaugural (laughs) to be rid of rid of uh, evil um but uh no it's right i mean we've we've actually talked a lot on the show about inclusivity and, and different things and issues with men and uh how we need to get better in touch with our emotions so we're not always you know running off doing stupid wars and, and things of that nature. And maybe we deal with our, you know, whatever, whatever is uh, uh, skewing at us. Um, uh, and so I like that. It's a good setting. It's a, it's a thing that we need to learn and, and 
turn the page on. Hopefully we, we enter a more gentler age with what's upon us. Um, certainly with the defeat of uh, any fascist, uh, you know, one of the things they bring is, is male toxicity and chauvinisticism and chauvinisticism. Is that a word? Um, chauvinistic, We're going to make it a word. We're going to make it's it a word. word now, man. Poetic license. Is that what it's called? Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, um, poetic license. I just took it. Um, so anyway, um, so I, I think that's good. I think it's more, more of that being in our media and supporting of that is really good as well. Uh, New America is split into different projects based on religion and race. And your book has an ominous future for LG BTQ Americans. Why was this important to put in this book? Uh, well, as a, <clears throat> as a member of the LGBT community, um, our history has been one where when fascists come in, when uh, the authoritarians, the, the fake Christians come in, the first group that they often go for are the LGBT. Um, you know, Trump's, one of his last acts last week was to uh, get rid of protections so that gay people could adopt uh, at affected elder care. Um, it, God damn it. Um, he, uh, it just it stripped a lot. Uh, homeless LGBTQ kids could be refused uh, to go to uh, shelters now because um, all those protections were removed. And so what I wanted to do with this book to, to so that it was believable um, was that the LGBT community in the beginning um, kind of disappears um, mm-hmm. by wearing those pink, uh, the, the pink sh- uh, stripes on your boot. Everybody knew who you were. Um, you know, the, the government had no tolerate uh, They just weren't tolerated. Um, and We'll we'll find more in the second and the third book. Um, like every other part of history, you think you got rid of us, but guess what? We're still here. Um, um, but it was important for me to, to 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 put that in to be realistic to say, hey, our history has shown this. You know, Hitler, uh, Hitler, it wasn't just the Jews. You know, there were there were other groups of people. And one of them were the LGBT. Um, they had to wear the upside down pink triangle as a um, as their identifier. Um, when we look back in our histories all over, um, generally they're one of the first groups to get pegged. So it was really mm-hmm. important for me to make sure that um, in this first book, we first off we know that they exist that they're acknowledged, but that it's going to have a bigger, uh, a bigger part to the overall story uh, in the next two books. And, and uh, I totally agree with you. I mean, uh, we've had some great authors on this uh, last year. We were, they talked about the rise of fascism and all the different fascist leaders, what they do. And <clears throat> uh, in fact, strong men by Ruth uh, uh, Bengay, I believe if I'm recalling correctly, forgive me if I don't uh, Ruth, uh, we recommend her book for Christmas. Um, but, you know, she she documented the profiles of so many of these fascist leaders, Pinochet, uh, Duterte, uh, Silvio Berscoloni, all these people. And usually the fascists come to rise after a time of a lot of rise of LGBT rights, LGBTQ mm-hmm. rights, excuse me, uh, after the rise of women's rights. And it really is a male toxicity uh, uh recourse or attack after seeing the rise of these and of course people that that are weaker people uh you know that maybe have disabilities and things of that nature the rise of intellectualism and science and stuff and and they they come to beat that back and usually that's the blowback is the fascists but you're right those are the first people they go after is anybody who's you know teachers intellectual and smart lgbtq women uh you know it just brings back all the male chauvinist male toxicity male sexuality or sexist 
Um, and, uh, you know, it, it's even interesting to me, like, uh, you know, the recent story of, of uh, in Hungary, where the one guy who was part of that fascist new government that just uh, destroyed democracy this year, or last year, I should say, um, in Hungary, turns out he's at a, you know, he's at a gay party, at, at, I think in oh, Amsterdam absolutely. or something. And you're just like, absolutely. okay, well, you're a hypocrite. <laughs> Hypocrite. It, it never it never fails uh when you look back at the people who in in government or those top of you know top positions um who are so anti lgbt you know there's a tap underneath that you know that airport <laughs> stall for you my friend um you know and uh, it, it, it's a, it's an important to, to to recognize that 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 we follow these patterns historically. Mm. And so, you know, it's, we have to, we have to be mindful of the fact that when you start seeing these signs that, that, that there's a certain prescription that's on its way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and uh, so it's good to bring light to this, shine as much light to this as possible. I was, I was quite extraordinarily uh, educated uh, this year by learning a lot of this stuff that that's, that's, you know, how this happens, the reaction, why this comes about. And I, and I, and I'll be talking about it for years in the future to make sure that we don't ever hopefully arrive at this point again, at least not in America, which uh, always stands at a risk. Um, so, uh, you're going to be writing how many more in the series to reiterate? I think three, correct? There, yes, there's three. Um, I'm writing the second book right now, um, Revelations. Um, uh-huh. And uh, these books also follow because it's it's not just a story about, you know, you know the, the breakdown of America. Um, it's also the story of a young man and trying to decide who he wants to be. And we kind of go through three different phases in our lives. You know, we grow up with what we're taught. We kind of embrace that because that's what our parents teach us. Um, And then our second phase is we start to question that and we rebel and we, we want to go out and we, we find out the world isn't really quite the way we were brought up, you know, and that's true for everyone. Um, And then, the third part of our life is we've come to our own conclusions. We've come to our own faith. We've come to our own philosophies and we settle into that. So these three books kind of follow that, uh, you know, that journey for, for Colt as well. Obviously it's an accelerated pace. Uh, Most of us, uh, you know, uh, I can only speak for men uh, generally don't find our ourselves until we're about 35, 36 years old. Um, (laughs) But, so this is an accelerated pace for him, but it also, the books kind of follow that, you know, uh, that human experience. Mm-hmm. There you go. There you go. And so the new book is, is it going to be new America and then that title, or is it mm-hmm. just going to be that title? No, uh, it'll be uh, new America revelations. There you go. There you go. Uh, the San Francisco book review, uh, new America awakenings is a powerful new release and goes for the jugular and refuses to release the script. The book is shot fired at the heart of the Orwellian surveillance state and has the makings of a dystopian classic. That's a great review. I, you know, if I could make love with that review, I would, (laughs) um, you know, when you're writing, you know, your biggest hope is, is that somebody reads it and they don't go, Oh God, this is crap. Or you don't, you know, your, 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 your big take back is my grandma says it's a good book. Um, so I felt very fortunate to have such good reviews uh, of this story. And I was really anxious because of there's, there's so many things in it that, you know, like, uh, takes on religion and politics and whatnot. Um, so I was, yeah, I, I I I think I want to eventually have that review like framed. <laughs> That's a great review. It really is. It like nails it. you. Like you read that review, like I'm buying that damn book, man. I'm reading that thing. Um, so uh, it, you built it out to run like a movie. If it were made into movie, uh, what would be your dream cast? And you can put oh. me in as lead if you want with my uh, with my flip flop socks. You know, I think we will put you in as like, you know, the character who's already lost their head and, and uh, is just on the guillotine. Or a villain. Yeah, probably guillotine. Yeah. Probably, that's probably the um, 
Kathy Bates would have to play Catherine. Um, the and it'll make sense to you when you read it. Um, but you know, she's just like literally uh, all I can all I can see is Kathy Bates playing Catherine. Um, I would love to see Colt's father played by. I know this is a little bit uh, uh, controversial, maybe a little bit, but Eric McCormack. Yeah, uh, he played Will on Will and Grace, and he also oh, did yeah, Travelers. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I think he's absolutely fantastic. Um, for Colt's mom, there's an actress here in Portland. Um, that I had the great privilege of working with. Um, and she's in, uh, she's been on um, Portlandia mm-hmm. uh, before. It's a funny show. Oh, it's hilarious. Uh, but her name is Katie O'Grady. And mm-hmm. um, she, I, I, you know, Laura Linney kind of comes to mind when I think about her mom, but, but when I, because I know Katie, she would just be like the perfect person to play this. Um, and then I'm torn, but there's a character named Marshall, uh, who, uh, is very instrumental in protecting Colt, but you gotta, you know, I don't want to ruin it for anybody. Um, but I'm really torn between Nick Offerman, Mm. um, and Henry Cavill. Mm. And I know they're completely different people. And, um, but those would, those would be my two, as far as the kids go, um, I kind of would like to see, you know, newer talent and not the same people always, uh, you know, being, being represented. Sorry, George Um, Harrison, you're out. (laughs) Or Frank. Well, you know, did I get that wrong? George Harrison? Because that's a beetle. What the hell? Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Harrison Ford. Harrison Ford. Yeah. I think he's a little old to play 16. (laughs) Um, uh, (laughs) But if I had to pick, if there was anybody, uh, do you, you know the kid from uh, Stranger Things? Yeah, yeah uh, no, the, the, the geeky, the, like the geeky kid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, uh, him to play uh, Joey. But as far as Jenny and Colt go, I'd really want to find somebody unique and new uh, to come to that role. There you go. Who would you have directed? Oh my God. Uh, Joss Whedon, I I think I could just like fall dead and be happy with that review and Joss Whedon directing my movie. There you go. Um, or um, Rob Reiner. There you go. Rob would be good. Rob writes. Yeah. He, he does some amazing things. But he might want to turn into a comedy. You know, he's he runs that way, kind of. Uh, he's done some. He's done some pretty good serious yeah. work too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he has a he's a pretty good eye. He's, it's so he's, he's a really good eye. It's so funny as a child. I grew up watching him as, what was it, Meathead? Meathead. Yeah. Like that was, Meathead. I used to watch Archie Bunker when I was a kid. I didn't even, I was a kid, so I didn't realize how racist it was. I knew that, <laughs> you know, we were going through a time of hippies and I'd turn on the TV and there'd be, you know, Nixon and the Vietnam stuff. And I'd be like, what the fuck is going on here? Um, but uh, it was fun to watch at the time, not understanding the context of it. Just Well, yeah. You know, but made all in the family just absolutely brilliant was that it embraced, yeah, you know, it embraced Archie Bunker and yeah. made no apologies for him. And, um, you know, I, 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 there's a part of me that thinks that uh, we could use a little bit of, of all in the family today yeah, on TV. Well, I saw a lot of people who took Archie Bunker seriously to, on December 6th. So, <laughs> well, you know, because Archie was so ridiculous, it, it kind of made people go, oh, you know, I, I don't want to be like that, you know, and, you know, but everybody knows somebody like him. December 6. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and now it's like, a, and you and you, now we got plenty of people to, to pick to play that character. Um, you know, can we just talk about the guy going through the Capitol with the Confederate flag for a moment? Yeah, sure. Um, you, you do. So first off, you broke into the, into the the federal capital and you've brought a freaking confederate flag with you got your picture taken everywhere but i find that this was the funniest part he surrendered to the cops 
the Confederacy, Confederacy lost twice. Lost twice. The, the <laughs> surrenders twice. But um, yeah, it was sad that the Confederate flag had never gotten that close to the Capitol and did. Uh, got I don't know how many years after this the official first Civil War, but never fucking again. In fact, I you know a lot of people disagree with me on first uh, on free speech and shit, but Germany's done a great job for the last. 70 years or something 80 years uh making sure that certain symbols don't get fucking used and it hasn't violated free speech and i'm all for that fucking shit there i don't want to see us uh, there's two flags i don't want to see three flags i don't want to see technically going back to the nazis ever again um at least not in polite society or legal society i i those just need to be banished into the shitholes of the world you know people uh misunderstand the first amendment on a grand level the first amendment says that we can say what we want about the government without the government having retribution it doesn't say that i have the right to uh say whatever the hell i want without consequence um and in the book it you know that 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 first amendment's taken away uh, on a personal and a governmental level. But mm. today, you know, one thing that I, I, I notice is, you know, um, we're being silenced. We're being silenced. And they say it over and over and over again. We're being silenced. I keep hearing you saying you're being silenced. So therefore, you must not be silenced. Um, <laughs> That's a good analogy. Yeah. Oh, I like that. <laughs> it, it, it's always interesting. It took me a while in 2015 to figure out the code and the code of our heritage, our country, and, you know, all the things you heard. And you're like, wait, your R doesn't mean all of us. It just means, like, you and your the rights you want to take away from everyone else with your little fascist. Well, and, and, and it's, been a part of, it's been a part of history. Mm-hmm. When you start hearing our country, you know, um, we're going to take our country back. You're absolutely right. You're not talking about our, as in yours and mine you mean your Mm -hmm. i'm going to take back you know my country um because there's no room for people like you um and and that's where we end up uh being in such dangerous territory of of getting to you know a fascist type of government you know i tell people all the time we have to have dissent we need Republicans as much as we need Democrats. We need Libertarians as much as we need the Green Party. Um, because when one party controls everything, that's the door that opens up for fascism. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's, it's important that we have those. Now, it's important to shut the damn door when they bring the Confederate flag with them. <laughs> you know, because then you're going to find yourself, you know, having to ask your new boss if you can borrow the plane <laughs> to you know go stay at your at at your hotel you know (laughs) so the the funniest shit is all those guys getting extradited to dc and they can't fly fucking home (laughs) that's the greatest (laughs) stuff ever man oh man uh in fact i was joking on clubhouse last night we were telling a joke uh we do this parody of uh, where we call ourselves zillionaires we're giving advice on how to become zillionaires it's just and everything is an opposite parody of the get rich quick element and communications that you see in books and different things you know and uh you you do literally nothing to become a zillionaire except put zillionaire on a vision board it's just it's like it's just complete <laughs> p- a parody of this of the uh of the some of the silliness that you see in these uh, get rich quick things so um we were talking about like what a good investment would be and i was like you know just occurred to me there's probably going to be a lot of homes for sale and assets for sale and business for sale people <laughs> like that texas real estate chick who who uh who was bashing in windows at the Capitol. there's probably going to be a whole lot of shit on the market you can buy for pennies on the dollar oh pennies on the dollar and um the the hairdresser that framed pelosi she was caught there too so i think there's going to be some hair openings yeah uh, in go. san francisco plenty of business and people are out of work they need the work and of course uh <laughs> The people that will be out of work from that will be making license plates. So there's that <laughs> with no parole. <laughs> so uh, there you go for the fun. So it's great. We, you know, you, you, you probably didn't see this happening, or maybe you did see this happening, and you called it, man. There we, <laughs> we are. <laughs> well, I, I'm certainly hoping that you know um, we've dodged this particular bullet. Uh, mm-hmm. I think we were on the precipice of it, but I think you know, um, 
that democracy is fragile. Yep. It's just fragile. We are always but one election away from ruination. Uh, yep. And that's what the book, you know, it, it, it tipped. Yeah. And this is what happens when it tips. We came a few closed doors in the Capitol that were people were hiding under desks in for ruination. I mean, the mm-hmm. I've seen, I sat there in horror because I've seen so many capitals burnt, so many buildings burnt in an insurrection and coups, you know, that Russia with uh, Gor or not Gorbachev. Well, it was the, it was a takeover from Gorbachev of uh, what's his face, you know, tanks in the capital and shit like that. And um, so I was sitting there watching it going, that building starts fucking burning. I'm going to lose it. Um, and uh yeah so there we are um the thing i'm looking forward to is the only proud boys i want to hear about is the lgbtq proud boys parading <laughs> the streets i'm all for that man that them reowning that shit is awesome and uh well God i've always them. i've always said that if you want to take over a, a government mm-hmm. first you send in your middle schoolers all your middle schoolers because they'll just tear everything to pieces <laughs> Then you send in your drag queens and everything will look pretty at the end. Yeah. Um, that's how you take over a government. <laughs> Maybe we should have Biden uh, appoint RuPaul as a fashionista uh, ambassador or some shit. I don't know. She can counsel me. I think the my... closest we got was was Pete Buttigieg as Secretary of Transportation, um, I, which I'm really excited about. I, I'm, I'm a real Pete uh supporter and a, a Pete nerd, but I was kind of like, yeah, that's see, he, he, they took my advice. They, they, they put a gay man in charge of rebuilding. And we have, and, a, I think we have a trans appointee and assistant to health, I think, or something like that. Yep. The assistant, the assistant yeah. health. And, and that's, that's creating some um, howling at the moon. Um, I'm sure it which, will fuck them. <laughs> uh, well, you know, at least we know that they at least we know their lungs are going to be nice and clear conservative tears but we will hear their voices in free speech uh yeah pete Buttigieg, that guy's got a fucking future i want to see him as president someday i i the only disappointing thing about pete Buttigieg is you'd sit and watch him talk and i'm like he's too smart for us dumb ass people in this nation uh but i i just love i love the way he debates man he's like whipping fucking smart man i would oh he, he's like surgical yeah he's oh, surgical he's surgical yeah. Yeah, he, um, I would not want it, to ever debate him over anything. No, he, he, oh, you, you want Brussels sprouts for dinner? Okay, that's fine. I yeah. don't want to debate you about it. Yeah. Um, you know, the, one of the things that just uh, amazes me um, is the group think that on the right that you know the progressive left and the Democrats are all the same. They hate the Democrats. They hate Pete Buttigieg with a fiery, burning passion. They hate him. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's it's that group think that gets gets us into trouble in the end. I invited his marriage partner to come on for the book that he wrote, and we couldn't get through to him by phone on Twitter, but or on uh, Instagram. But uh, yes, yeah, I would hate to get in that you know this household debate. <laughs> 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 Did you make the eggs? That anyway, I'm just joking. Uh, so anyway, guys, uh, anything more we need to know about the book before we go out? Um, actually, yes. Um, the the book is um, if you like the ebook versions, um, like for a Kindle, iPad, um, I've reduced the price for that down to two ninety nine, so that you can go in, check it out, um, see if you like it, um, and then you can always go back for the hardcover later. Um, you know, being a new author. Um, and, and people going like, who, who the hell is this? Um, I, I, I really want to invite people to, to get into this story, to you know, find themselves, um, to, to look at where we possibly could go. Um, but, you know, uh, it's for two ninety nine on iBooks and at uh, Amazon.com. Um, come and visit me at... Um, you know, my website or um, my blog posts. I am on Twitter um, at the Tyler, uh, Tyler Davis books. Um, and if you, if you like it, just like with Chris, make sure you leave, you know, make sure you leave a comment and uh, you know, and, and, and give it a couple of stars and tell a friend. There you go. Let's go. Are you in Goodreads? You should get over there. If you aren't, I am in Goodreads. There you go. There you go. So check him out on Goodreads. Guys, check out the book. Uh, the, I'm just glad that it's a uh, work of novel 
theory as opposed to fact. <laughs> <laughs> and so you can uh, you can read what would have happened. Maybe I don't know. Maybe that's a reach. Uh, check him out, guys. At at uh, New America Awakenings. Uh, it's been fun to have you on, Tyler Davis, and check that out. Thank you as so much, well, Chris. My, to my audience. Uh, thank you for spending some time with us. It's been a fun discussion on an interesting day to do it or interesting time. Uh, oh, you know, it, 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 historic. Yeah. The old saying, may you live in interesting times. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! For five years, I've lived with the. Uh, I've lived holding on to a couple logs, and one log that I've held on to through the rapids was was Biden saying, uh, "You know, democracy in America, we zig and we zag, and hopefully, we always zig back to the right course." So uh, it's been a it's been a it's been a weird ass journey, or like George Bush said in the last inaugural. That was I don't think we're, I don't shit. think we're done. I don't think we're done. Um, uh, but you know, the last the, the last four years have been interesting. There you go. Let's put <laughs> that <was some> weird <laughs> shit. <laughs> I want to get an audio or just a video of, of George Bush saying that. That was some weird shit Ooh. after that uh, thing. But uh, anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. We certainly appreciate you guys being here. Check out the author. Check out his links and all that good stuff. Uh, buy the book. Get the hardcover. I love the I love the hardcover of books. I love the the tactile function of them. There's and they they look so good on your shelf too because people go, wow, you're well read and smart. But uh, there you go. Uh, go to youtube.com forward slash Chris Voss. Uh, hit the bell notification button. Go to goodreads.com forward slash Chris Voss. Facebook.com forward slash the Chris Voss show. Check out all the groups over there. LinkedIn forward slash uh, Chris Voss, of course. And check out the big groups over there. There's a big 135,000 C class group that we have over there as well. You should check out. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks for being here. Wear your mask. Stay safe. Welcome to America. We'll see you next time.